Hi, I'm Mike Janung. I'm going to look at some news articles on pornography today and just read through some headlines. I'm going to start with one article that came out of the Philadelphia Inquirer, South Jersey Mom with a Heart for Strippers, Porn Stars, Prostitutes, and Crossdressers. Kelly Master at the Cherry Hill office of For, Digni For Dignity says, we fully respect these girls where they are in their lives. We get much further with them than we would if we came in saying, you're in sin, you're going to hell. You get nowhere with that. She is well, well aware that some devout Christians would likely question why she is so deeply empathizing with women who are making money by showing or selling their bodies. She says that strippers, porn stars, prostitutes, and cross-dressers are my friends. I travel in with them and I pray with them and I give them my time, money, and energy and I love them and I know God does too. When I read that, I was, I was just blown away. I mean, I was inspired and I, I just think that if every church had a ministry like that, that went to the stripper bars, I mean, wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, I even thought about maybe with our, with our ministry locally, maybe I can we can start praying and asking for some women that God might bring to go to the local strip bars. So to me, that was just, I loved that. That was incredible. And then um, another headline, most people have watched porn at work and lots of us are masturbating at our desks. 60% have watched porn at work with 10% masturbating at their desks. 36% went to the bathroom at work. And then another one having to do with work, women masturbate more than men while looking at photos of colleagues. Two out of five women have looked at pictures of male colleagues on social media while masturbating. 39% of men and 42% of women masturbated to colleagues' social media photos. So we really don't talk about women struggling with lust very often, but what we keep saying is this is a bigger and bigger segment and we get emails from women that are saying, hey, you've kind of left us out here, and we're struggling too, and we need help. And then um, at work, I mean, that's how, when this gets a hold of somebody, that that's how far it can go, is it can take them to doing this at work. We hear people who have been fired. We just got an email this last week from a wife who said her husband got fired um, from his job. And the problem with pornography is it affects every part of the life, not just the home life. So um, that, that desire that once less gets a hold, it can take you places you never thought it would. And then another um, stat, women getting into porn in a big way is the headline. Women, gone from, women have gone from 17% of all women to 30% are now viewing pornography. So again, women are the highest or the fastest growing class when it comes to viewers of porn. The Chicago Tribune, uh, and these are all recent headlines, by the way. These are not old. Um, these are within the last past months. How porn is affecting kids. 11 is now the average age a child is first exposed to pornography. 94% of kids will see porn by age 14. And we receive phone calls from parents saying, hey, my seven, eight, nine, ten-year-old child is having issues with pornography, what I do, what should I do? And a lot of parents are still kind of blind when it comes to this, and, they, and they're shocked when 10, 11, 12-year-old junior comes to them or they catch them with pornography on their phone. So the bottom line is an eight-year-old kid does not have the emotional maturity to be watching, to have a smartphone with wide open internet access. You might as well just hand them a ticket to a stripper bar and say, hey, uh, you want to you see what that's about? That's how stupid that is. So um, with my own kids, I, we've been very cautious and we started giving them phones around the age of 13. And, but you know, we, we walk with them through that process. You don't want to just be throwing a smartphone on your kid. Uh, another headline, porn stars are dying young in the porn industry. Five young actresses have been found dead in the recent months. And that, that's heartbreaking and that's tragic when you realize that all of us who either have watched pornography or are viewing pornography are contributing to this problem of killing these women. I mean, yeah, they, they um, signed up for it. They made the choice to go there, but 
but the, the, the deal is that we are creating the demand. We are creating the demand in the church for that product. So every time that we light up something like that, uh, pornography, um, we're playing into and feeding and financing the porn industry, which is destroying lives at both ends, not just the, the marriages and families, but the people who are creating it. And now I'm going to get into, I'm just going to read several titles in a row. Um, former church leader to make choice in his child porn case. And then just a brief text on this one. Between 2011 and 17, this person served as a worship director for a Presbyterian church, producing Christian music for the church. So he's basically getting ready to go to jail for child pornography. And then these are just some, some more titles. Again, in the recent months, pastor gets life in jail for raping stepdaughter. Ex-Oregon pastor sentenced to 11 years for child porn. Former youth pastor pleads guilty to child porn case. 73-year-old church organist found with child porn. Former Sunday school teacher to plead guilty to child porn. Former Sarasota pastor accused of inappropriately touching girls with more victims possible. Just, just yesterday I saw another um, headline, a 58-year-old senior pastor uh, was just arrested for child pornography. Every single week there are people going to jail in the church and leader posi leadership positions for felony crimes and especially child pornography. And the reason I'm reading this and showing you this is to make you aware of what's happening um, because what happens is pornography will always take you where you never thought it would. And these guys did not wake up and say, you know what, I'm going to commit a felony today that's going to destroy my life. They more than likely got into the quote on soft core stuff and then they graduated and they started crossing boundaries and one day they got hit with an image that burned into their mind and from what I read, um, child pornography is 10 times more toxic than adults having sex. So um, this is the church under the hood. This is the church that's unspoken and people don't talk about. These are destroyed lives and destroyed families. And this is what this plague is doing because we're not addressing it completely. But also what I hear from a lot of pastors is that they feel isolated and alone and they have nobody to talk to. So if a pastor is struggling with pornography, the question is, does he feel comfortable enough to go to his elder board or someone and say, um, I'm really having a hard time right now, can you help me? Uh, from what, I, what I've seen, a lot of pastors are afraid of the, the pitchfork treatment where, okay, I screwed up and now they're going to get driven out of town and lynched. So, you know, we can be the church that shoots, shoots its own from time to time. Part of this is because we have a stick up our butt and we expect everybody to be perfect. There is no such thing as a man or a woman in this life who is not fatally flawed and deeply broken with a sin nature. So we understand that our pastors need help and they need care and concern just like the rest of us. That will go a long way to making, you know, to helping this problem. Google Trends. The Bible Belt has more porn conception than other states. Researchers at Brock University, after pouring over two years' worth of Google Trends data, concluded that states that tended to be more religious also searched for websites using the term sex far more often than the national average. The state with the most porn users was determined to be Utah, which declared to be a public which declared pornography to be a public health, health crisis. In 2009, Utah also ranks number one in subscriptions to pornographic websites. And I've, I've heard this many times in the past that the Bible Belt, the, uh, the southeastern area of the country with the biggest religious affiliations, those have the highest rates of porn searches on Google and other, and other places. So the crazy thing is that why, why is the church the biggest porn user more than the secular world when we're the ones saying that, you know, this isn't a good thing? 
I think part of it is that um, once you tell somebody you can't do it, it like flames up the flesh and the flesh says, hey, I want more of that. I think part of it is our culture. Um, a lot of us don't even want to talk about sex. I mean, when's the last time you had porn and masturbation mentioned openly in your, on a Sunday morning service? Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people just don't, don't want to hear about it. They just want to go along in their merry way and pretend everything's okay. And, and this is not a unique article. I've heard of stories where guys who have run Christian conventions went to a hotel and then the hotel manager, when they saw that they were believers with their anti-porn boards, just started snickering because he said that when Christian conventions come to town, that's when their porn rentals shoot up. So, um, you know, that should cause us some, some shame, but... The real thing is that um, we have all the answers. We have the God who sets captives free. So what is it, what's going on and whatever, what are we afraid of? I think part of it is this, we have kind of a sunshine and roses outlook where we don't want to believe that two thirds of the men of the church and 30% of the women are struggling with this stuff because hey, um, we're the American church, right? We have all the greatest seminaries in the world, and we have you know greatest pastors in the world, pastors in the world. So what could go wrong, right? And if two thirds of the men in, in your church and mine are doing this, then we're doing something really wrong. That means that we have a corrupt church, right? A church that's corrupt with sexual sin. But it also means there's a lot of people that need help. I also see another problem. Um, is lack of training. Pastors come out of seminary and they're taught how to preach God's word, but they're not taught how to, to deal with this and address this issue. So if a pastor, even if a pastor gets up once or twice a year and says, okay, pornography is sin, if they leave them there and do not equip them on, okay, what does it look like to overcome that sin? You have not done them any good. All you've done is tell them it's sin. Tell them it's sin. They already know that. When I was doing porn, I knew it was sin. That was not the issue. The issue was I didn't know what the way out was or what it looked like. So we need to start equipping our church leaders on what um, leading people out of this mess looks like. And so as I've thought about this in recent weeks, what we're going to start doing is offering what I'm calling a Blazing Grace Seminary, where um, this will be for ministry leaders and pastors. So it'll be like a two or three day treat up in the mountains. The first day will about be about ministering to you, pastors and ministry leaders. The second day will be about equipping and training you on what to do in your congregations to effectively deal with this. So we'll sign up for our newsletter and uh, we'll be making announcements about this in the future. Thank you.